Hello True Believers, welcome to my channel Mr. Miracle Comics, my name is Dave and today we have five more undervalued comic books for us to take a look at. So lots has happened since our last video, uh, especially you know San Diego Comic Con happened and there was all kinds of stuff coming out of there. We got a brand new trailer for the D&D uh, movie, looks pretty good actually, it looks like well definitely the best D&D movie that they're going to have ever put out alright and that's that's not hard to do. There's never been a real great D&D movie. Um, what else did we get? Yeah, some more Shazam stuff. There's the Shazam 2 with the Marvel family in it. And after some more Black Adam stuff, of course. And, you know, the DC stuff was great. But it was the Marvel stuff that really wowed people. You know what I mean? Like, blew, blew us away a little bit. We saw what's going to happen in Phase 5. A few extra properties that are going in there. And then a little tiny... You know, just a smidge of what's happening in Space 6. Daredevil, of course, was announced. No big surprise there. We'd seen Charlie Cox in the Spider-Man movies. He was rumored to show up here in the She-Hulk streaming property as well. Um, so when they announced the Daredevil movie, I was like, yeah, that kind of makes sense. They've been kind of leaning toward, leading up to that anyway. There were some, lots of rumors about the Netflix stuff. The contracts ending with Netflix for those properties now coming back over to the Disney side, which means that Disney has full rights to use them in whatever way they want, and those characters. Uh, plus, we saw, you know, the uh, Wilson Fisk in uh, the Hawkeye uh, streaming property as well, right? It sort of tied back a lot of that Netflix stuff. Hopefully, they'll keep that going. Um, I'd really like to see Jessica Jones come back. I thought that she was a great character in the Netflix stuff. Uh, of course, you know, Burton Tall's um, Punisher would be great to see in the Marvel Universe. No no kind of announcements on any of that kind of stuff yet. Yet. But, you know, you never know. You never know what's going to happen. Um, so, yeah, Daredevil was no big surprise. Uh, Thunderbolts, bit of a surprise that they're announcing it at that point, but... Thunderbolts has been a rumor for a long time now. Like, we speculated on that a couple years ago, their first appearance. Probably more than a couple years ago. Um, I know, I think I'd have to go back and take a look, but I think back then I paid about $15, $20 for their first appearance. Uh, definitely has seen a, a marked jump in price since then, right? And the closer we get to that movie, uh, the more of a bump that's going to be, as well as, you know, lots of the other books around that. <clears throat> Some not some are undervalued, some not some not so much. But um, so that, so Thunderbolts wasn't a huge surprise. The two uh, Avengers movies, right? The Kang Destiny. Obviously, Kang had been you know rumored and coming up, and then we knew that he was going to be the the big villain in Ant Man and the Wasp movie or Quantum Mania that's coming up. Um, we also knew you know he was a, the big villain, the surprise villain at the end of the first season of Loki. Um, which was, you know, really great, you know, uh, when Sylvie stabbed him and the timeline went nuts and it's been leading to all this uh, multiverse stuff. So I really see, I really like it. Like I like these two properties being there. I think, you know, we're seeing more of a real comic book event, right? If you look at how comic books work, they'll take every issue of, of that they're publishing out and bring it into this event. And even though they have independent stories, some of these independent characters are doing things that lead towards an end, right? And I think that's this is more of what's going to happen here, which I'm excited for. I like it. Uh, Kang's a great villain. You know, if you're going to pick a villain, it's great. I mean, they're doing the time thing again, which was a little surprising to me, but nonetheless, right? So we, we got a couple announcements there. Secret Wars, I was pretty surprised that they're going to do that as soon as they're going to do that. I figured it would, might be, you know, the end of Phase 7 or whatever. Uh, but nope, we're going to have it here at the end of Phase 6 to end of Phase 6. And there are, of course, eight properties that, you know, they you know, they didn't announce. They just have little slots there. And I think there probably be more than eight, but for the eight that they don't show slots, obviously we're going to get Loki Season 2, right? That's filming right now. Um, Armor Wars is scheduled to start filming October. October, late October, early November. So we're going to get that as one of those eight. Um, I would assume Shang-Chi number two is also going to be uh, one of those eight that's going to be in there. I'm really hoping, and I think it's there's a really good chance, Deadpool 
right? We're seeing, you know, Miss Marvel brought, starting to bring in mutants. And of course, in the Doctor Strange movie, uh, Xavier was in that. He's a mutant, right? So he would probably be the first MCU mutant, mutant, right? Um, but, you know, Camilla Khan has been retconned into a mutant as well at the end of her show. Um, so they're, they're, they're going to start slowly bringing in mutants. Won't, you won't see an X-Men property here until 2025. Um, so I don't see an X-Men until Phase 7 at the very earliest. Uh, mostly due to the contracts, right? Uh, just because they got the properties back into the Disney family from Fox uh, doesn't necessarily void all the contracts that are around it, right? So all the actors that got signed up to do those movies are... If there's a, another X-Men movie, they are officially tapped. They have to come and do it as part of the contract, right? So that their characters can continue on. However, it's kind of a two-way street. If there's a movie that's put out about them, um, they have to be those characters. They have to be hired as those characters. So if Disney wanted to put out an X-Men movie right now, they would have to get, uh, you know, the different actors that played Cyclops and, you know, Mystique and all the stuff to come back and be those things that you know Michael Fassbender would have to come back as Magneto because they're still under contract for this until 2025, right? Um, they make these contracts without realizing that Fox was going to get sold at some point, blah blah blah. We were able to see Xavier in you know uh, the Doctor Strange movie because they actually brought the actor back to play him, right? Like so that he fulfills his contract. Um, they they do have full rights with. Wolverine, uh, simply because Hugh Jackman's already fulfilled all his rights because he's done the extra three Wolverine movies, right? So he's done Logan, Wolverine Origins, and The Wolverine, right? So that he's contractually fulfilled. All of his stuff is done, but lots of other actors are have a certain amount of stuff that have to be fulfilled by this year in order for blah, 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 contract and perpetuity of, you know, legal speak legal speak but so you're not going to get an x-men movie till 2025 so that won't be one of them uh, but definitely going to see deadpool uh which they can bring in because they'll keep ryan reynolds under contract to continue to be that character right so that's fine right they'll bring ryan reynolds back in so they can do a loki movie but they're not going to bring back those other actors um, they want to bring in their own people have sort of a soft reboot or a fresh reboot on the whole idea of the x-men so don't expect that for 2025 movies i would think it were going to be part of that eight and i would definitely pay attention to d23 which happens starts on september 9th that weekend september 9th this year where they're going to really make some announcements and i would expect to see things like like i said the deadpool movie being announced loki season two being announced um, but we may see nova right nova they've been hinting at nova for a long long time uh, i'd like to see nova be out there there's some hints around Wonder Man. I still don't know about Wonder Man. I think that's a little bit of a, mm, it might happen, it might not happen, because one of the big things that happened with Wonder Man, and the whole reason they killed Wonder Man off at the beginning, uh, when they were in the, back in the day, is that uh, DC threatened us to sue them, because it's so close to Wonder Woman, right, to having Wonder Man. So they were like, eh, this guy's done. We don't want to get sued. We don't want to get into this whole thing with everybody. Um, so... You know, I can see them doing that. that. That's a comic book. I mean, we're talking about billion dollar movies now. Um, DC, Warner Brothers is definitely not going to be happy if they do a Wonder, uh, Wonder Man, right? Opposed to their Wonder Woman. So I, I'm a little hesitant about Wonder Man, but, you know, if you want to believe, speculation is wild, right? Um, who else could I see coming in as, you know... It's part of those eight movies. Like I said, Nova would be, you know, we may get a Submariner solo movie somewhere in there. Um, not just the Thunderbolts, but, you know, there could be all kinds of different stuff that's going on um, where we're going to see this kind of thing. So, that being said, let's get into our 500 values. I'm sure you're waiting. Dave, shut up. Just show me some comics. Show me some comics, man. I don't want to hear you talk. book on our list today comes from 1985. And it is Secret Wars, number two, number five, right? So that's from 1985. And this guy has the first appearance of a character called Boom Boom in it. Um, so Boom Boom, she's a girl, a young girl that makes little light balls that explode and stuff. Um, 
one of those characters that you know became an X-Men in the 90s she, she's she's not the most popular X-Men out there but I don't think they're gonna uh, put the most popular X-Men into the whatever property they're gonna go and, and produce right they've said you know they're not even sure they're gonna use the X-Men's name um, they're not gonna have the same traditional characters that the Fox guys did uh, they want to bring in some different characters you know, I would expect, you know, to have some of the money characters in there. We're still would like to see, of course, Wolverine, Storm, um, probably Cyclops, right? Uh, Professor X is going to be in there, uh, blah, blah, blah. There's been so many X-Men. I'm trying to collect, you know, whatever X-Men and kind of appearances that happened in the 90s that kind of fit the narrative of what they're trying to do, uh, bringing more female characters into the group the mcu and you know boom boom i think checks a few of those boxes there so she is a candidate especially when i paid five dollars for this guy for my lcs right um really nice copy here you know nothing wrong with it at all It'll probably be up in the nines for sure um so you know it's dirt cheap first appearance of a character that is a mutant that is an x-men that has a possibility of getting into uh, an mcu property uh, a mutants property of some kind so again i'm trying to you know dig out a lot of these characters that you may not traditionally see in any kind of an x-men movie right like they always get those x-men from the, the 60s in there as their 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 main base but i think they're gonna try and you know tweak it a little bit and go a bit of a different direction with it right differentiate their mcu x-men from the fox ones that you know that happened in there the fox guys are still canon that still happened but in this multiverse in the mcu 616 universe it happened differently so uh yeah that's a, i think it's a good pick for five bucks right so from 1985 secret wars 2 number five and yeah look to pay around the five dollar mark for that one lots of fives there sweet all right so number two on our list and we saw a trailer with this character uh with the character of the submariner in it and i really like the whole you know making a mayan kind of uh aspect of things it's like i think that's really kind of a cool concept for namor and the atlanteans right uh that they've disappeared and they come back and they're still with that ancient kind of culture going on um but uh, his, of course, first appearance happened in the 1940s, I believe. He predates Aquaman. So if anybody ever says to you, you know, Namor is nothing but an Aquaman ripoff, incorrect. Aquaman is nothing but a Namor ripoff. Namor was around first. And um, anyway, he had a run of comics through the 60s and 70s, uh, The Submariner, of course. And from that, from 1971 we get uh submariner number 33. dun 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 right so here uh in this issue is the first appearance of namora since the golden age right so namora was kind of namor's girlfriend uh her first appearance i think is marvel mystery comics number one which is you know a few hundred thousand dollars for an issue of that if you're lucky enough to have that one in your collection of course i don't but i do have this one and which is her you know a much more reasonably priced uh copy to get her first silver age gold you know bronze age i guess since 1971 is right on that cusp you know what i mean um look to pay around Somewhere between twenty to forty dollars would be a good price for this one right now. People are starting to kind of gleam on it a bit uh, with Submariner uh, definitely showing up. People are going to start looking through all of those Submariner comics, seeing where they can find uh, some undervalued comic books, some first appearances and stuff. And I think number thirty-three, uh, first Namora, Nam Namora since. Uh, the golden age of course she was also well i'm speculating that she was also one of the characters in the trailer there and yeah very close ties with everything that the submariner was doing in the 1940s um so yeah her first appearance since the golden age shows up here and again from 1971 it is the submariner number 33 first appearance of amora since the golden age not her very first appearance but first time we see her first time we see her in an actual marvel comic 
not just a timely comic all right so that was number two so number three on our list um and let's do a dc comic there was a bunch of you know dc stuff going on this one wasn't one of the ones speculated on but i think there's a good chance here um so wonder woman number two 1984 you know wonder woman 1984 which was wonder woman number two came out not so great right story was a little far-fetched a little weird um little not so not so feminist that it, you know i think they dropped the ball a little bit on that one it didn't need steve in it didn't need uh the monkey paw didn't need all this stuff anyway regardless of that there is going to be a third wonder woman movie uh with gal gadot coming out um of course that'll be a few years from now but they are and i think it's pretty strong rumor saying that circle is going to be uh the villain right we're going to keep this all girls in the house you know it's one thing to make a mistake and as long as you learn from that mistake going forward and you don't repeat it that you know mistakes happen and they're and they're and they're great right so 1980 uh, wonder woman 94 was a bit of a, a misstep a bit of a mistake uh patty jenkins learns from that and goes forward with her next movie uh, i want to see like a full uh all female superhero super villain movie right i don't want steve coming in and helping her out she doesn't need help from boys i don't want to see the villain you know being a guy and taking over half the movie and being doing his dumb guy stuff <clears throat> that was a mistake right i want to see wonder woman fighting simply female villain characters right keep it all all the ladies like all the ladies and that's what and you know and wonder woman go out there and kick butt in her own uh female fashion anyways let's talk about the character circle right so circle was one of her main villains in uh the golden age and they're talking about her being the villain for this next one her first appearance in the golden age is very expensive uh so i'm uh speculating on uh from 1988 uh wonder woman number 17 right which was from volume two of wonder woman right this is a george perez issue and this has the first appearance of circle retconned from the uh, from crisis on infinite earth right so this is the first modern appearance of circle and with her being the villain and like i said her golden age first appearance being incredibly expensive um you can get this one though for i paid three dollars for it right plus i did get this one off ebay so i think i paid five dollars at shipping as well so this is a super mint condition copy and i'm all in for eight bucks right uh when that wonder woman movie comes out if circle is i'm like i said we're always speculating we're doing deep specs we're far out on these things right so sometimes we're years away from any of that kind of property showing up or, or any of those rumors being confirmed it might be years down the road so but if you're gonna buy this guy for three bucks who cares if she never shows up oh well i got a comic for three bucks that sits in my comic book collection but if she does show up and this book turns into a 30 dollar book that's really great that we got it for three bucks right this is where our undervaluing comes right in right so i like that as a first appearance um like i said since retroning her from the golden age into the modern age so her first modern appearance of circle um so third third on the list now from 1988 it is wonder woman number seven okay so number four on our list um here uh you know this book is seeing a bit of a jump already just uh, we speculated on a long time ago when it was a dollar bin diver um it definitely jumped up from that price point uh, but i think it's going to get a, another really nice big jump um mostly it's taken a jump lately because of its tie-in with the new she hulk uh streaming show that's going to come out which i'm a little iffy on i'm not sure if that trailer really enticed me into thinking it's really great <sighs> it looks to me like they're going to fall back on that same stupid trope all the time where the only way that the women can look heroic is by making the men look stupid you know what i mean like she can't be she hulk and be awesome on her own she can only be she hulk and be awesome if she makes the hulk look stupid right so everything he's trying to do she's just you know automatically better oh i hate that i know lots of women i used to uh referee women's flat track roller derby so i've met 
hundreds of really strong women. Trust me, women do not need to make men seem stupid in order to be awesome. Women can be awesome all on their own without doing that. And I hate it when that trope happens because it's a disservice to both sides, right? For men and women, right? You're saying that the only way that women can be awesome is if they make guys look stupid. And you're saying that the only way that guys aren't more awesome than women is if they're stupid. Incorrect. Incorrect, incorrect, incorrect. Women are awesome all on their own. <clears throat> and they don't need to make anybody else look stupid to prove that they're awesome. Women are, There are billions of women in this world that can hold their own against any guy out there, superhero or not. So I hate it when they do that trope. That's that was that I could see by the trailer that was one of my biggest problems already with She-Hulk. Anyway, sorry, a little bit of a tangent. Um, let's get number four. Comes from 1979. Uh, it is Marvel Two and One, number 54, which has the first appearance of the Grapplers and specifically a character named T Titania, uh, who is going to be. I think uh, one of the characters in the She-Hulk uh, streaming show. So that's kind of bumped this book up a bit. Not as much as I would have expected, so I'm keeping in the undervalued. I don't really care about the Grapplers or Titania. What I do care about is that this has the first appearance of one of the Thunderbolts called Screaming Mimi, right? Or Songbird, right? Songbird is when she retcons her name into and when she joined the Thunderbolts. And lately, uh, Sadie Sink, uh, the young red-haired girl from Stranger Things, a uh, really great little actress there, uh, she has been tapped for Marvel, and a lot of people are speculating that she is going to be in the Thunderbolts property as Songbird. And this kind of makes sense, right? They're going to introduce a few of these Thunderbolt characters. We're going to get some new characters to go in there. Um, characters like Songbird uh, could show up, right? We, can, we don't just want to see the same characters we've been seeing in the MCU for the last 13 years. Let's move forward a little bit and, you know, get some new characters in there, characters like Songbird. So I think, you know, it's a pretty strong rumor and she's a really strong actor. Uh, for that part, Thunderbirds would be great. You know, I'd, we can speculate all day uh, who's going to be in the Thunderbirds, but I think uh, Songbird has a very, very strong uh you know, ties to the Thunderbolts and would be a very strong character that they would bring in. Combine that with, you know, a great actor and all these rumors coming in that she's going to be Songbird. I think that this book will take a serious jump if uh, one of the main characters in the Thunderbolts is first appearance is here, right? So, yeah, it's taken a little jump, especially you know, in the last, you know, few months that... Uh, because of Titania, but I think it's due to take a big, big jump if it's Songbird actually shows up as one of the Thunderbolt characters, right? Not just an ancillary character that's in somebody else's streaming show like Titania, but one of the big characters that's part of a major property like the Thunderbolts, right? So right now, this book, I've seen it, I mean, like I've seen it go anywhere. People had it listed for around the $20 mark. I'm not 100% sure what the grade is. I saw slab 9.8 is going for around 600 bucks i think that's way too much right at this point that's way too much to be paying for that please don't pay 600 dollars for this book in any condition um but i think it's pretty reasonable you can get this book you know somewhere in the 20 to 50 dollar range in a really really nice shape right and i think it's going to take a significant jump if um sadie sink comes out she is songbird she is part of the thunderbolts uh, you're definitely gonna, at that point the 9.8 for 600 bucks is going to seem you know pretty reasonable right it's going to take that kind of jump into that into that range from there so she'll be a major character in a major property not just like Titania who might be part of the She-Hulk streaming show anyways um yeah so from 1979 uh it is Marvel 2 and 1 number 54 First appearance of Grapplers, first appearance of Titania, but most importantly, first appearance of Songbird, one of the members of the Thunderbolts, and rumored to be part of the Thunderbolts in the new upcoming properties, and played by a definitely a good actor. So, 
look to pay somewhere for a decent copy of this book i would be expecting to pay anywhere from 20 to 50 dollar kind of range for this guy don't go too nuts we're still buying this based on a rumor right not all these rumors pan out right i've had some that just never panned out lots that have but you know some that just don't pan out but i think this is this book if that happens is due for a big jump after that right not just a little bit of a bump <clears throat> excuse me not just a little bit of a bump that uh we got from titania but a big jump um all right so last one number five on our list and number five is actually going to be two books so uh this character again having to do with the thunderbolts and i think would have something probably to do with the marbles if she pans out right and i think you know uh, this character he's, you know if it happens it happens but um i'm gonna go with uh from 1975 uh, it is captain america and the falcon number 192 and this has a per first appearance of a character named carla soffin okay so carla soffin um and like i said it's two books and we'll also throw in there from 1978 the incredible hulk number 228 okay so carla soffin becomes moonstone so this is her first appearance as Car carla soffin sorry this is her first appearance as carla soffin this is her first appearance as moonstone you can see punching the hulk right there um, moonstone becomes a thunderbolt she also becomes a dark avenger she takes on the mantle of captain marvel like you know in carol danvers place in the dark avengers uh like i said the thunderbolt um i think you know she'd be a great candidate for the mcu uh, again and she'd also be a great candidate for the marvels as one of the villains there right like you know they're going to bring in uh, monica rambo Camilla Khan and Carol Danvers into the Marvels but she was a Ms. Marvel too right and having her as a villain in that would be awesome right you gotta you, you gotta find a villain that can meet the power level of Carol Danvers right I mean she she could take on Thanos apparently you know uh he he was without the infinity gauntlet you know you know she was too much for him to handle but he could beat up the Hulk but he can't beat up her anyway um uh so you gotta come up with some characters that are gonna be a challenge for her right you can't just let her just walk in and mop the floor with whoever it is there's not much there's not much drama in your movie if you know that the main characters have absolutely no chance of losing right so <clears throat> it's not just good enough to have a story you have to have a story in which there's some sort of drama in which the character might lose that's that's better writing right and i think miss uh, marvel moonstone is a good candidate for that plus being tied back to the thunderbolts and to the dark avengers we've heard rumors about as well uh great set of books to have in your back pocket right these couple of books first appearance of carla soffin first appearance of moonstone of carla soffin as moonstone um both of these books kind of sitting in the same range uh 10 to 20 dollars is where you're going to find a nice in nice collectible grades uh again these are books from the 70s so they're you know pushing past 40 you know almost getting to 50 50 years old now uh still a great you know still you know can find lots of them in great shape out there and i think it's worth picking up for that 10 20 dollar range if you come across them not super under the radar but it's definitely these books will definitely take a huge jump if moonstone carla soffin is in any way shape or form uh brought into the mcu we, we we never know who contessa d whatever her name is uh it's gonna bring in for the thunderbolts right um yeah i think these are a great candidate for that one like i said so from 1975 and 1978 uh look to pay about 10 to 20 dollars for a decent copy of either one of these and yeah first appearance of carlos often first appearance of carlos often as moonstone here we go great set of books to have regardless of what uh yes so let's have a little bonus haven't done one of these or as much of these as a while in a while 
San Diego Comic-Con, we got uh, a trailer for Dungeons and & Dragons. And you know, I'm, it looked good, right? I mean, if you're a Dungeons & Dragons player or a Dungeons & Dragons fan of any kind, uh, you've definitely been waiting for some kind of big-budget Dungeons & Dragons movie for, you know, my whole life. I haven't seen anything great come out. There was that terrible one with Jeremy Irons in the 90s. And, you know... I haven't touched on much of that because it's such a bad flop. And, you know, they've got the technology, the CGI stuff now that they can really, you know, knock a movie like that out of the park. Love to see some of these really uh, classic D&D monsters show up in this thing. Maybe a Beholder. That would be really cool. Anyway, um, so Dungeons & Dragons. I know there's a book out there, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, number one. First Dungeons and Dragons in comics. Incorrect. Uh, so the first Dungeons and Dragons in comics comes from this book from 1982. It is Marvel 2 and 1 Thing in Wonder Man. Number, oops, sorry, 78. This has the first appearance of Dungeons and Dragons in any comic books out there in it. Yeah, so it's actually like a little advertisement for Dungeons and Dragons, but it's a comic book, and it's serialized, right? So it's a multi-page, serialized, recurring comic that happens between 1982 and I believe 1986 is when the final uh, episode of this advertisement slash comic book came out in, com in Marvel Comics. Um, we've all seen them, the little Dungeons and Dragons guys doing their little adventure, and shows up in all the issues, and then a few months later they had a continuation of all that stuff. But... You know, unlike just being an advertisement, it was a serialized comic book. So I seriously consider this uh, the first appearance of Dungeons and Dragons in a comic book. Right, and that, you know, take it as you will. Uh, this is not an expensive book in any way. So this one I paid three dollars for. Uh, you should be paying around the three max, 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 ten dollars for a. Really nice copy of that guy. Um, but yeah, little deep spec there. Little, had to do some diving to figure out exactly where the first appearance of Dungeons and Dragons was. <clears throat> Advanced D&D number one is like the first ongoing, really published specifically for Dungeons and Dragons comic book out there. But the first appearance of Dungeons and Dragons in comic books happens here in 1983 in... Uh, Marvel 2-in-1, number 78. So yeah, look to pay 3 to maximum, maximum $10 for a copy of that guy in really nice condition. Yeah, so that's a little bonus book for you there. A um, little bonus for you, books that I would avoid. I would avoid anything to do with Marvel Boy right now. Uh, Crusader, Marvel Boy. It seems to me like they took Camilla Khan... Uh, they retconned her powers away from being, you know, like a plastic girl. They, they, they didn't want her... She has the same powers as Mr. Fantastic does. So they didn't want her to have those same powers because the Fantastic Four is coming out and they're going to give Reed Richards the stretchy powers. Uh, they don't want people being confused because, you know, they think we're all stupid. And between, you know, having a young girl, Pakistani girl with stretchy powers, being confused for a super white guy with stretchy powers, we just want to get the two confused, right? Instead, they gave her Crusader's powers, Marvel Boy's powers, right? Marvel Boy gets his powers from the Negabands, and they basically channel channel out, you know, and he can construct anything that he wants. He's Marvel's Green Lantern, in, in other words, right? So they retconned Camilla Khan's powers into being Marvel Boy's Crusader's powers, and he was a member of uh, the Young Avengers. I would now more likely see that if they do do any kind of Young Avengers property, uh, which is another one they might, you know, announce at some point. Um, Camilla Khan will take Marvel Boy's place in the Young Avengers. And, you know, be the MCU's, Disney MCU's Marvel Boy will now be Camilla Khan, right? Because they, they're not going to give another set of Negabands to this guy and say, oh, he's got the same powers as her when they just get her different powers so that she didn't have the same powers as somebody else, right? That would be even more confusing. So I'm thinking Marvel Boy is out of the MCU. Do not count on Marvel Boy. Don't 
I wouldn't bother unless you come across a really super cheap copy of any of those books uh, that are, you know, keys that have to do with him. I would avoid them. Don't go out of your way to get them. Discourage your friends from buying them. I mean, I could be totally wrong. You might show up, be the, be the whole focus of Phase 7. Unlikely. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, avoid Marvel Boy, in my opinion. Anyways, guys, I rambled on long enough. Thank you so much for watching. If you've watched the whole thing through, sometimes people I know, they just skip to the where they see me holding up a comic book. Uh, hopefully you don't mind my ramblings. And you know, I'd really like to, to know what any of you guys think one of the, you know, the eight properties that are uh, happening or that are going to be announced might happen, right? If you want to leave a comment down below uh, about what you might think with one of the eight properties that Marvel is going to announce at D23, uh, please do. Right. I, you know, I'd love to hear some of your opinions and you guys are all smart watchers as well. Uh, that kind of stuff helps me out, helps out the channel and helps each other out. Right. We're all trading spec ideas and whatnot. Uh, anyways, again, thank you for watching. Please, if you haven't, uh, like and subscribe to my channel. I know everybody says that, but it just really is important to help, to help out each channel grow. All right. So this is Mr. Miracle Comics. Reminding you that, uh, you know, Wednesdays might be new comic book day, but every day is old comic book day. This has been Mr. Miracle Comics. I'll see you next video. Thanks for watching, guys.